You are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the WHOA GNV Podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. And I certainly had my coffee this morning. <laughs> I am psyched. Guys, this morning on the show, we have John Cook, owner of Welding to Recycle, a company focused on making buildings out of shipping containers, something that I've had plenty of time in over my career as a scooter business owner. <laughs> and with him, we have Vanessa Alfonso, who is the marketing manager of Welding to Recycle. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Colin, for an invitation. Yeah, man, this is great. I'm like, so I went, I went out to kind of check these things out and it was incredible. I mean, what you guys are doing is really, really awesome. So I cannot wait for you guys to kind of dive into how you how you got into this and then how you ended up marrying this guy and how, <laughs> how you became the marketing manager. We do uh, crazy things sometimes, you know, yeah, that's yeah. why. <laughs> well, I'm super excited to get into it. But before we do, I have to introduce my guest co-host for the, for the day, Whitney Spellacy, welcome. Hello. How are you doing? I am fabulous. Excellent. She is here representing the Junior League of Gainesville. In fact, she is the Executive Vice President of the Junior League of Gainesville. You got it. Are you ready for this? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get into it, well, one, Aaron. So Aaron's here too, right? We got Aaron Preston, who is the President of Junior League. Aaron, come over here really quick. Just run across the cameras. It don't matter. This is my show. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> come say hello into this microphone right here. Hey, everybody. Just wave to that camera right Hi. there. <laughs> so she's here in the house too, and of course we have all of our production crew here, and got a full, got a full room today. I like it. I'm excited. Yeah. So why don't you like tell everybody exactly what Junior League of Gainesville is, and um, maybe some of the plans you guys got going on for 2019, all the exciting things happening in y'all's world. Sounds good. Well, thanks first of all for having of us. Of course. This is awesome. I'm psyched. Um, so a little bit about the Junior League. We are a national organization, actually worldwide, and our Gainesville chapter has been. Um, established for over 80 years. So we've been around a while in Gainesville. Um, and we are an organization of women committing to promoting volunteerism, developing the potential of women, women, and improving communities through effective action and the leadership of trained volunteers. So our major focus um, right now and for the next year or two is food insecurity. So we're really working on that. And then one of our major fundraisers is coming up in March, um, Tour of Kitchens, March 16th, where you can tour some of Gainesville's awesome kitchens, get some food at these kitchens from our local restaurants and so we brought you some tickets today so yes, you can check it you. out and we hope to see lots of people on the tour because the funds we raise are going to go right back into the community and also to um, help the league train women volunteers so got my we're, tickets we're right pretty here. excited super appreciative of that and of course like kevin your husband ended yeah. up sitting in a book right here thanks kevin shout out to kevin for the nice book that's an awesome gift so I appreciate that. But, um, well, that's excellent. So, I mean, these are all kitchens that I can't afford, basically. Me too. Me too. That's, that's why we go <laughs> like visit giant, them. Beautiful, giant kitchens. Exactly. That I, exactly. I mean, maybe, if, can we put one in a shipping container? I think we should. Bed? That would be awesome. We want you on the next floor like of that kitchens. Answer, there you go. Friend. Of course you can. Well, that's awesome. So, I mean... You said main focus right now for 2019 was what? Was food, food insecurity. insecurity. Mm -hmm. So is that a big is that, that a big issue? That's like, a big issue in Gainesville. So lots of kids are going to bed hungry um, and on the weekends. Um, it's it's an issue and it's it needs to more attention. So one of our major partners is Food for Kids, the backpack program. And so we work with them to help them stock their um, backpacks so that every kid in the schools are going home with that if they need it so they don't go to bed hungry on the weekends. Excellent. That's great. I, you guys, I don't know, you, you guys don't know this, but but I went and I spoke to y'all's group. You did. And that was a lot of fun. So it I appreciate great. you guys having me. I Anytime I stand up in front of like all women though, <laughs> I get a little bit more nervous. I'm like, oh, don't mess up. <laughs> like, don't mess up. There's been a couple times where like in inside of a speaking engagement, I was like reflecting back to, actually when I spoke at Gone one time, I was, re I was reflecting back to, um, to my college days and I was like I was like oh yeah like chicks dig scooters and like and then everybody was like I can't believe you just <laughs> Like not not during it, but like was it was it you, Ronald? Like afterwards, I was like I was like, so how did I do? He goes, really good, but you probably shouldn't have called that group of women chicks. <laughs> I was like I wasn't calling them. I was talking about my college days. <laughs> anyway, so not yeah. 
Oh, I'm just gonna leave that there. We might, <laughs> we might have to cut all that now that I think about it. <laughs> but anyway, it's uh, it's always fun for me to be able to go speak to wonderful organizations, and y'all's is certainly a wonderful organization. Thank you. So thank you guys for everything that you're doing for the Gainesville community. Um, and I'm just super appreciative of you, and I know the rest of Gainesville is too. Thank so, you. And I'm excited that you are here as my guest co-host, and we're gonna ask these guys some questions. Let's get into do the it. Story. You Let's ready? Let's do it. Yeah. It's gonna be awesome. So John, Vanessa. We like to start with the origin stories, okay? We like right. to we like to kind of dig into it a little bit, go back, tell you know how you ended up falling in love with welding, and then you're like, all right, I'm just gonna make people houses and really cool studios out of shipping containers. Do we? I think we have some B-roll of this. You are oh, you guys sent us some? Yeah, you have videos, yeah, you, pictures. Okay. All right, we're gonna put make sure we do that. We're gonna put some of the video on top of this. So this is definitely one of those podcasts where you might want to go watch the video version because it's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And you were telling me how you're trying to strategically place these containers so we didn't like cut down trees and yes. stuff. And I think that is really, really awesome. So, yeah. so John, just uh, you know, tell us your story, man. How did you get here? All right, uh, so <clears throat> I got into shipping containers um, a long time ago when um, I saw Dirty Beaches. And I saw a lot dirty of beaches. Dirty, dirty, <laughs> dirty just, beaches. All right, just making sure. I'm talking about make sure, making sure that was the word. Yeah, make sure like, you word. use the right word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, English is my second language. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. I just want to make sure. I'm talking about the ocean, sure water, water sand. <laughs> okay, so but I'm pretty sure you saw the other thing too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get into that. <laughs> all right, so. Um, um, I have traveled uh, around the world uh, doing cat surfing, and I've seen uh, a lot of plastic on the oceans. And I started getting into recycling, and I got um, very involved into recycling. And I started seeing shipping containers on the webs, and um, the, just the recycling part of uh, just building out of shipping containers just blew my mind off. And I I started following, uh, you know, people building shipping containers and I found out that there were about 500,000 shipping containers being abandoned every year around the world and uh, what do they do with them well they they stack them up and then they melt them down okay when when they get melted down you know about 8,000 kilowatts is used to melt them down that's That's about energy that's about more or less 16,000 tons of carbon dioxide thrown into the atmosphere, more or less. I hope I'm right with all these calculations, but uh, that's more or less what it is. It's just an enormous amount of uh, carbon dioxide thrown into the atmosphere. And, you know, they are great as structures. They are used uh, to uh, transport car- cargo around the world, and they're super sturdy, super strong. They're durable, and you can do unlimited uh, types of uh, structures out of them. So um, I got really excited about it um, and I started uh, studying uh, welding technologies and uh, got into welding. The only reason I got into welding was because I wanted to do shipping containers because I was never interested in that. I was into the boating industry. I was a yacht broker down in the Caribbean and um, uh, I moved to the United States and I got all into that. So um, um, I met uh, an architect. Uh, his name is Steven Binder. Uh, he's is uh, my hero. He's uh, an architect only dedicated to design uh, shipping containers. We got together and you know he started uh, sharing some projects he had on and. Um, he asked me if I could do this, and of course I started doing uh, you know shipping container uh, projects for him. So uh, that's more or less uh, the story about it and how I got into this. And so you said you're from Venezuela. I'm from Venezuela. And yes. when did you come to the United States? I came. Um, well, I was born here in, in the United States. Okay. Half of my family is American. I was born in California, but my parents got divorced when I was one year old, and we moved back to Venezuela, where my mother is from. And then I came back to the U.S. when I was 17, and then I left. Um, again to Venezuela in 2005. I came back again uh, to the United States in 2014 due to the political crisis we're facing right now. I love that Vanessa just like took your hand off the table. Uh, yeah. I-, I heard the song. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's like, don't tap uh, the table. Yeah, yeah. No, it was. <laughs> I, I have to have that right hand person in my life too. So, so Vanessa, you do all the marketing and stuff, yes. right? And what, so I mean, you. So John, you fell in love with this, like with this idea. 
right? Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and so you're just like, I'm, I'm gonna do this. And then you recruit Vanessa to help you do it. <laughs> like, what was that like? Well, uh, actually, I, I fell in love like with passionate people. Okay. And even though shipping container or construction is not my area, marketing is my area, but at the end, when you work in marketing, you work with everything. And you learn to love everything that you're gonna sell. So, um, and of course, he, uh, his passion was so contagious about recycling, about building things that you cannot even imagine from a shipping container. So that's why I was like, John, we have to make some noise with this. And at the beginning, he didn't, he, he didn't agree with me. He was like, I don't need to make noise. I, I just need to do it. And I was like, I believe it's a good thing to do. Um, we have great ideas. We can make things, in, incredible things for Gainesville, especially. That, I mean, right now Gainesville is not into that concept. I mean, I believe there are like three buildings here in Gainesville um, out of shipping containers. Four already. Four. Okay. four and how many of those did you? Because you had you told me you'd done a house here. I've done two of them. Oh, you've done two of the yeah. houses there. I've here. done a house, a residential. And um, this is a commercial, the one that you that you saw, the the yeah. artist studio, which is super cool. And we're not talking like, you know, you picture like a shipping container. It's not like a container on the ground. Like it's, he's like literally, like welding these things together, adding second stories. I mean, they're they're like crisscrossed and they're like yeah. tall. Very I mean, complicated. Yeah, they got like decks and all sorts it's, of cool stuff. It's just yeah. not boxes right it is a design it is something beautiful and beside that we liked it, that project because they kept the trees right at the beginning when we saw the the lot john was super con- concerned about i said it was going to be impossible yeah and john was like <laughs> they're gonna cut all these trees oh my god and i have to be part of this and we were like, oh my God. And then they decided to keep them. And we were yeah, so no, excited owners, about it. They, they were, I'm sorry. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, owners, the owners said that we don't want the trees to be cut down. So you figure it out. That's cool. So it was, it was a, a great deal. And how did you get connected with them? Like, uh, did they find you? Like, I don't Steven mean. Binder? It's Steven Binder. Um, they they uh, contacted Steven Binder about two years ago to start planning this project. Okay. And then I came along to, and to develop Binder? it. Uh, Steven Binder, he's the architect. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry. He's he's a UF professor as well. Okay. And like I said, he's all he's uh the the biggest enthusiast I've ever met about shipping containers. So yeah. I, well this place is incredible. It's was it's on sixteenth? It's on sixteenth street and, and Waldo. 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 Sorry. Sixteenth and Waldo. Um I mean it's a there's a brand new music studio being created out there. It's beautiful. So they have that in the front and then as you go around the back, you like are just exposed. I mean, to me it looks like a adult playground. Yeah. <laughs> just awesome. like, I'm just like picturing like zip lines or something. I'm like, exactly. man, this I'm like, man, this could be like an adult playground. This place is super super cool. And oh, I, yeah. and I believe that one that uh location would be a great opportunity to you know, develop amazing things around it. You know, that area is going to be super important. Right very soon so everything it's like what ha- my, my dream is to have something like like um winwood in miami mm-hmm. something like that i mean we're trying to do that to to develop a movement in which everybody like artists and all that are moving to an area and great and, and do great things in the same place we need to get more people excited about it yeah. yeah and i think that gainesville is a perfect place for that like the culture sure. here from a music and artistry standpoint is incredible so i definitely can see this playing another role into that and i mean one of the first questions i asked john when i met him was like so you know what's well, like what does the city think of this <laughs> yeah. you know like well, what what does that look like and you told me that it was very positive that they want to see more of it yeah for sure uh, i i was um when it started i was like oh it was going to be super impossible for um to to develop shipping containers here in the us because um the regulations the code regulations to to build they're super strict but then little by little, I found out that it wasn't that way. They were pretty open about it. The only thing is that you have to show, uh, you know, everything has to be calculated by, by an engineer. It has to be designed. It, has, it, it cannot be just, a, you know, a do-it-yourself thing that you just go and buy a lot and just put it there. You have to comply with the laws, building laws. Yeah, well, and I think the world is becoming 
more aware of the fact that we need to focus on sustainability and repurposing and reusing sure. things, right? Like it's it's becoming very commonplace in 2019. So yeah. I think the cities that do grasp hold of that are gonna you know have greater success long term for sure. Um, so it's cool to see that you guys are kind of at the forefront of that, at least in this particular you know type of business is really really yeah. Neat. And I believe Gainesville is ready for other ideas like restaurants, shipping container restaurants. I believe it's something that has to come pretty soon. Well, so, I mean, even when I met you guys and, and you guys are giving me the tour, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I kind of want one now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, where, where can we put one? Maybe out front somewhere? Like, let's just like, where can we do this? Yeah, uh, and, and you know what is amazing about this? It, it is, well, one of the things that I believe is important, especially for Florida, is that they are resistant to hurricanes, for example. So that's a good thing here in, in our state. And another thing is, depends on the design, it could be portable. If we're thinking about restaurants, for example, or food trucks. Right. So I believe it's something that is good. Whatever you see it, it's a great idea. And you're recycling. That's exactly. <laughs> well, it's really cool for me, because I mean, I've spent 15 years in the back of containers. <laughs> you know, like just unloading shipments of scooters and the products that we sell here at the shop. I mean, it's just been, that's been my life for, for so many years. And well, now I, you can I know what it's, your I know, home. Yeah, I know what, yeah, exactly. It's so weird to think about that. I'm like, uh, it's so weird being in the very back of those things and, you know, 90 degree weather, sweating, <laughs> and then being like, man, this could be a home. This is neat. Yeah, they're gigantic. Yeah. Super. Well, bigger. how many, so what's the biggest that you've welded together, I guess. The, like, what was the house in terms of square footage? How many? 1,600 square feet. Okay, so how many containers? That was five shipping containers. Okay. But it's five of? Five uh, shipping containers, 40 feet long, the high wow. cubes. Yep. Yeah. So how much longer does that take to put together than like an average house? Because it seems like there's just so much more that goes into That's making that question. happen. Well, it's, um, it's pretty fast. You really? can do it pretty fast. You can also do it. Um, like I can have one next week. Uh, well, not <laughs> that fast. <laughs> <I'm> just, <kidding. laughs> just curious. Uh, it will take a little bit less, uh, but um, you can do it actually upside as well. For example, you can order your house from somewhere else. From somewhere else, and you cannot. Um, it's not necessary to develop the house on site. I can cool. do it in a shop. I can design your house in a shop. I can modify the containers in a shop, and then I can just deliver everything to your site, mm. and then just put it together. So that, for example, if I do everything in a shop, and then I'll take it to you, it will take uh, one day to put it together, and then um, to do the finishing scene inside, well, that'll probably take a month, more or less, but um, it's pretty quick. That's and, cool. Yeah. Kevin, uh and he's getting ready to do container house. Just so I was just thinking just, that. Just a heads up. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to want a beach container house. You know? Ooh, those, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So probably better awesome. on the beach, right? Yeah. Because of the hurricane stuff. He's <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they're meant they're meant to be in the marine environment, so they're very well protected. They're they still will last for 500 years. We'll we'll that. talk after this. <laughs> for sure. Well, so tell me a little bit about like the business side of things, right? So I mean, is it is it just you two? Like uh, on the team, I mean, like, are you doing all this? And you're, I think you're subcontracting stuff, I guess. Uh, well, welders or we have weld. I have welders, okay. uh, but since uh, shipping, I don't do shipping containers every day. We do every every time we get a project, we get into it. So I have a group of people that I know for a while, and they come. You know, I I contact them, and they come uh, to Gainesville, and then we we de develop it, and then we do it. Cool. What's, so, I mean, what's been the biggest, how long have you been doing this? Uh, five years. Five years. So in those five years, I mean, you're kind of past, you're kind of past startup mode now, like startup, like startups are usually about five years, is, so you're right there. Um, what's been the biggest challenge so far? The biggest challenge is, uh, well, put the team together, that's one of the biggest one. Um, to have the right human resource is is very complicated, but once you do it, once you have it, is that's that's great. I hey, think this, this. I believe another thing that is very challenging or stressing for you, because I've seen it, is how delicate the the his job is. I mean, when we're talking about welding, is putting together pieces of steel that if they don't do it the right way, it could be a mess. 
So sometimes, like, when, when they're doing, like, the second floor, for example. Oh, well, that was super complicated. Doing a second floor, it requires a lot of precision. And following thou- uh, a whole bunch of pages on, on drawings and following all that is, is quite complicated. But um, for me, it's a little bit more complicated, the human resource part. Even though it doesn't sound like that, but it's kind of complicated. But, um, yeah, uh, putting it together is complicated. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, I don't like following directions to begin with. So (laughs) So it's like if I had to, like, look at, like, charts or something, be like, all right, got to get it exact. That'd be a problem for me. I don't think I could pay that much attention to detail. So that's me personally, though. I, I'm glad. I'm glad there's, you know, I'm glad, there's you, out, I'm, I'm glad you. you're out there in the world. So I'll do so, it you know, for you. <laughs> there whenever you go. you're ready. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, so I mean, is this particular project the most ambitious welding project that you've done, or has there been another? This is uh, for sure the most complicated one I've done so far. Yeah, and it's technically it's two. I mean, it's two separate buildings. Yeah. Right. So because you, how many containers are making up? the two different buildings? All together is 11 shipping containers. And uh, we have containers uh, in vertical position. We have containers in the second floor. They're quite flying. Uh, they're on very high columns. So, um, and they're all, those columns are gonna be wrapped with the stainless steel. So they have a look that they're floating when you see when you see it from the from the far, because they're gonna be reflecting the trees and everything surrounding it. Uh, so cool. all those columns that you saw the other day, yeah. they're gonna be like mirrors reflecting all those uh, you're, things. You're talking about it. the vertical. I'm talking about everything. Oh, everything that has a it. column. All the columns are gonna be wrapped oh, with wow. a stainless steel That's or cool. something. Uh, it doesn't necessarily has to be a stainless steel. It can be other material that uh, reflects everything around it. So they're gonna create a sensation that every piece that is on on, on columns are gonna be flying. Actually, so that's what's so cool because this is gonna be an artist studio. Yeah. So and the fact that the building itself is gonna be super artistic is, yes. is really really neat. Yeah. It's I cool. believe they're, they're gonna make like a gallery or something, art gallery over there. I'm not pretty sure what, what they're gonna be doing with it. Um, they're for sure gonna be doing some art in there. Mm-hmm. Another project that we have in mind uh, and we're trying to work on that is, I believe uh, I told you, Colin, is um, we're thinking about, as we said, this is portable and weather resistant or hurricane resistant. So. We were thinking about offering uh, shipping container homes for um, countries, let's say, um, that suffer from these catastrophes like hurricanes. So, uh, like emergency homes. Like uh, what happened in Puerto Rico, more or less. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so, to, to assist the people that, you know, lost their homes during hurricanes. We've been working in Dominica and the island, and we. Well, John was uh, in charge of uh, of the project of um, reconstructing a um, cruise port. So um, they remodeling and they were remodeling it and repairing that. And from that, because it was because of the hurricane, right? Yeah. Or a storm or something like yeah, that. Yeah, hurricane. So we were thinking about that. Why, why don't we offer these people? Because there's there was a lot of people without homes after that. So we, we were thinking, well, it's pretty simple to bring the shipping containers here to modify them and to build the houses. And if they don't need them in this part, they can take it to another part of the island and use it for, for like temporary homes for people. Now, is that something that happened or is this something that you just... No, we're trying to we're develop it. That, we're, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're working on that. I mean, because that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. That can help thousands of people. All right, so talk to me about the steps of execution. How do you make that happen? Oh, we're working on this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the challenging part, That's right? That's very challenging. As an entrepreneur, like you're very, you know, I'm super visionary. I'm always painting this picture, and it's just like, all right, now what steps do I have to take to actually make that dream a reality? Well, yeah. it's not it's not that that difficult. For Since, her, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> For her, everything well, this, is doable. And this Again, is this is why this is we, this is why we build te- Yeah, this is why we build teams. This is That's why we have exactly. executors at our right-hand side. I keep saying, happen. like, it's simple. Come on, John, you can do it. Come on, come on. And he does it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, my God. 
I what did I get this guy into? <laughs> well, you know, that's super common in business. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't think a lot of people realize that like, even with like, you know, Walt Disney, like, I mean, yes. he was the visionary and like his brother was very much like an executor and that's, exactly. that's super common in business. I mean, I, I need that. I Now don't get me wrong, like I can execute. And then it was, it's funny cause I got into this conversation with, um, with some friends recently because I'm uh, I'm currently developing a new like goal, just some goal planning that I'm doing. And, and it's actually, I'll tell everybody about it. what's the name of the book. So it's called it's called living your best year ever, which is kind of cheesy, but um, but you go in here and you set like your ten your ten goals, mm -hmm. right? And then and then literally it kind of breaks it down into steps like by week. I need to get one of those by by week yeah. in order to accomplish the goals. But it makes you it kind of has you choose your banner goals, which are your like top three goals for the year. And I was like, man, like this is cool and all, but I want to achieve all ten. So I've been kind of doing it for all ten, but I'm like literally breaking nice. it down into the steps. And it's funny because I've always, if I paint a picture in my head or I get a desire deep enough, I'm able to accomplish the goal. That's good. Like with this, awesome. with this building, this building is probably the biggest case in point. I have a video from 2015 where I'm like, the owner doesn't know yet, but I'm gonna buy this place. And I just kind of like set that in my mind mm -hmm. that I was like, I'm gonna buy this place. And then I just naturally started taking the steps to to get there. Vision. But, but what I realized, but what I realized is if that if I have more than one goal then I have to really, I have to do this. I have to break it, I have to break each one down and be very, very strategic and focused on how I'm gonna accomplish all 10. Whereas if I just have that one major desire, that one major goal, like, because it's at the forefront of everything I'm doing, like, I'm going to get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if I have more than one, then I have to break it down. So it's, it's interesting because. That, what you're doing is business process management and you're following steps to, or you're like doing a diagram to to do something at the end. So that's what I do with him. I I do the process management and I make him to do it. Yeah, yeah she throws me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's great because it's funny even with our new with our new agency, you know, one of the first things that I recognized, I was like, okay, I need to get I need to have this right-hand person who's going to be who has the opposite strengths of me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got to, they have to have so I mean and if you want to grow, you cannot do it everything by yourself. Right, right. And well, and sometimes it sounds like I'm not like strong enough in these things. I'm actually really good. I'm a very organized person. But there, what I've realized that my strength is is laying out that vision, laying out the plan, laying out the strategies for the business. Saying, okay, here's how you're going to accomplish your goals. This is what we need to do in order to do it. And I'm good about laying that. Then it's like, all right, I need to get my team of executors. I need to get all these guys like heading towards that place. Um, and I'm good at that part, but. You know my right hand, my, my right hand woman. Uh, her name's Allison, and our new company, Repaint. Uh, we, we call it Repaint for short, but it's called Repaint the Wall. I mean, she's just super organized, like task or like has the tasks done, helping with the proposals. Like she does all the stuff that I hate to do. <laughs> so I think you know having that partnership, having that person who can you know help you execute the plan and and push you to keep going is critical. Um, yeah. We have that in both of our companies here, so it's awesome. Great. Yeah. But is it hard being married to yeah, each other? It's gotta be. It's gotta be, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, Shannon hard. refuses to <laughs> work with me. Yeah. Like, refuses to work with me. She's like, no, I'm not working with oh, you I ever. Oh, I couldn't work with Kevin. Heck no, heck no. No way, no way. So, but believe it or not, we get along better working. Yeah, actually. okay. Yeah, we, we, we build awesome. a great team. That's yeah. awesome. No, and you have to separate that. I mean, from a certain time, stop talking about work, even though we do it. But we try to, you know, separate personal life and, and our jobs because otherwise you will spend the whole day talking about that. Even though sometimes we do it, but we try, we try. Yeah. We're, we keep thinking. And that's the thing when you are the owner of your company. It's not the same when you work for another person. You, yeah, you never stop working. Yeah, right. exactly. That's super challenging. Mm -hmm. I mean, I sometimes feel guilty because... I get home and I can't turn it off. And I'm just like in it. I'm I'm already focused on the next day, the next week, the next month. Like I Exactly. Yeah, can't, can't you just can't turn it off. Yeah. Like I would be going home thinking about, you know, Puerto Rico and the oh, yeah. and be like, all right, like oh, I need to get this done. Like how am I gonna get this done? And, and dreaming about it. And, and mean, keeping dreaming about it, yeah. Meanwhile, you know, <laughs> spouse 
wants you know quality time wants to spend time with her husband which i which i understand i'm just and and if you have terrible. kids you have to dedicate time to them so yeah of course that's why you have to stop and say like okay we should stop right now it's time we have two girls mm -hmm. so it's time for the girls and how old are they uh 18 and nine okay Wow, they're pretty spread out. Yeah, yeah. we were okay. lazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were lazy. Uh, that's awesome. We're planning for a third one. Yeah. Well, what we're doing, <laughs> nine we're, nine we're living I'm just like kidding, nine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, it's a good idea. We're living nine years not between a good each idea. other, so they take care of the brother. <laughs> that's really smart. That's pretty smart. That's actually smart. <laughs> I've got a three they and four year old. Cook. I wish they could do that. I yeah, wish. Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, they they already so cook. They, the can, <laughs> they keep watching the baby, so it's perfect. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good job. <laughs> well, then, going back to um, Dominica. So um, what we had in mind is simple. You you, you were asking if, if it, how, how difficult it was. First of all, we have to sell the project to the government, which is, I believe it's the difficult part. And because the rest is something that we are used to do, you know? I mean, John knows that, he knows where to buy the shipping containers, how to modify them, how to assemble them. The only thing is the negotiation with the government is the only thing that we have to put a lot. And getting paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's get, my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to. Don't think worry about it. <laughs> I have to think it's pretty challenging, right? I mean, I mean, what? Even getting the the containers. I mean, what was that? I mean, are there places that are just like, yeah, man, we sh we sell them <laughs> before they before they go and waste that energy to melt them down? What, what do you mean? The where do, where do I get? I mean, this how, what was that process like? Where did you? I mean, I don't even. Oh, even to get know, shipping I don't containers. Even know where to buy a container? Yeah, the, the, can I buy one and put one in my backyard right now? Go to ports. You're gonna see them everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. We have one in our garage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We recently got one. Finally. Yes. We needed one, so we keep our bicycles in there. We keep some some other stuff in there, but it's awesome. Do to you have think the that, city would let you put one of these? Studios, container studios in my backyard. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. If it is not attached to to the ground with foundations, is a portable thing. So you can actually make a little slab and you can just put it on top of the slabs, or you can just make piers and just put it on top of piers. You can make your right. office. But legally, over there, you can just put it and dump it in there. But if you're gonna build a bathroom, if you're gonna, you know, bring in a whole bunch of attachments to it yeah, that's going to prevent from up. taking it out easily, then you're going to have a problem. Gotcha. If they see you. <laughs> <laughs> they always do. Can you erase, can you erase that part? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's kidding. Hi, uh, John. It's so funny. <laughs> We're leaving it. <laughs> We don't edit anything. I don't work uh, with him. Yeah. <laughs> you know what he, I don't know him. <laughs> That's what we do here. You come to our podcast and you get divorced and you end up not working with each other anymore. Just like that. I mean, it's over. Yeah, yeah. Well, for sure, you can, you can have, you can build your, your studio, you can put solar panels on, a, on the shipping container so you can be, you know, 100% off the grid. Or you can just, uh, just uh, do like a plug-in like uh, mobile homes have or like um, RVs have. So you can just plug your shipping containers to your house and you can just install a mini split system for AC yeah. in there. It's very easy. You can you can do multiple things with it. That's really cool, man. So All you need me. is creativity. So I mean, can't, I know it's probably super difficult to get, you know, because there's so many variables that go into one of these studios. And like you said, you know, if there is a house or something that has plumbing, like I know there's a ton of variables, but I mean, can you give me like, You know, what's a uh, base, or, or what, it probably depends on size too. What's like been the least expensive project that you've done? And then like what has been like the most expensive? Okay. Um, just so I have like a I, residential? I, a res yeah, I just kind of, I mean, I kind of want it. I would like to know based on the projects that you've already done, but then say, okay, if I wanted to do like a two container thing in my backyard or something that didn't have any plumbing, like what would something like that realistically look like? Because I'm actually seriously interested and I think other people would be too. <laughs> okay, so if you wanted to do a residential unit, a house with plumbing, electricity, insulation, drywall, all that stuff, 
that's going to be more or less around $60 per square feet. And then if you want to do something unattached to the grid, um, depends on what you want to do, but if you want to insulate it, if you want to do a door over here, a door over there, it's hard to calculate it, um, but for sure. Well, just imagine a shipping container, you can get a used shipping container for 1800 bucks. Wow. The delivery is about $600. And then all the modifications and that come afterwards, um, I don't know, like I said, if you're gonna build like a studio, let's say, I don't know, uh, it's hard to to calculate it like this. Uh, I'm gonna hold you to it, so make sure you get it right. right this <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for the second show, I'll bring you the numbers. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it just sounds super intriguing. It sounds like something that I'd be completely into, so. Yeah, it's I'm completely just... doable. You can do it. And, and, sure. and as we were talking the other day when you went to the, the studio, is something that you can make it fancy and spend a lot of money on it, like putting a lot of glass and you know fancy things right, right. or a fancy design, or you can make it like very hippie style, which is nice also, and it could be beautiful and not spending a lot of money on it. Right, the Elestral, for example, the, the, the art studio, that was very complex. It had to be modified um, a, a lot. A lot of um, a new structure had to be added to it. So that made it super expensive. Yeah. So that was not cheap. Because if I'm like, yo, I want you to remove this entire wall of this container and put just glass all yes, the way across. Exactly. Like, that's, that's super gonna expensive. Cost a lot. Yeah, that's Dang gonna it. cost a lot. I was hoping that that was not a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what I would like in my backyard. Maybe, I, you know, because now I'm kind of doing some meditation stuff. I'm like, oh, like a little meditation room, little peaceful, quiet study zone. I don't know. But you can find a different idea. Instead of putting glass, you can put a, like a door that you can open and give, keep that space open. There and you go. Feel the wind That's coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> of course, price just keeps going up, and then and then when I add my tour of kitchens kitchen in there, <laughs> I'm trying to make some money for the company. Really Come on, up. yeah, baby, but uh, you're making it more complicated. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> I like it. So, so Vanessa, I mean, tell me, like, what's the challenge in marketing this? I mean, how do you like let people know that this exists? Well, um, we're. Like I said, we have only five years, and I say only because it's a short period of time for this um, business. And it's been difficult because at the beginning he was only focused on working, working and make some things to show, you know? Well, at the beginning he was not thinking about showing anything. And then I was like, we have to show, we have to show, we have to find more customers. And this is not traditional marketing. Right. You don't do like traditional advertising for this, like you're not gonna be in, I don't know, on TV and something like that. It's more like PR thing, you know, um, contacting the right person to be in the right place. So I believe, for example, for us it's been very important um, the, the, the relationship with Steven Vinder, the architect, because he has contact John with important people like the the owners of the artist studio. And I believe being there also contact um, the, um, the owner of the house yeah. you, you made. So it is something like that. I mean, in, in turn, in, in, instead of the traditional marketing, it is more like PR marketing that it, we're, we have to do. Got it. Um, so I feel like establishing more relationships with the architects is probably a good idea. I mean, do you guys have more of those out there that? Are... Yeah, and uh, builders, uh, general contractors. That's, yes. Those yeah. are those are our targets. Um, we target architects and general contractors. Those are our clients, actually. But one one thing that is very important for us is to keep always uh, the concept of recycling, to be uh, in res environmentally responsible. That's something that we, we cannot lose and we, won't, we don't want to lose. And that is very delicate when you choose the partner or the people that you're working with, they have to understand this. Like I say, when we saw the, the lot in which we were going to build the, the studio, we were concerned about the trees. And not, not everybody understands that. Everybody, especially in the construction field, they're like, no, forget about it, demolish everything. 
And we were like, that is not our concept. That would be a problem. And at the end, thank God, it, it, everything was perfect. But we, ha- we that's what we would like. We like to keep that concept and we like to be, you know, to keep our way of look at the things and our contribution to the environment. So you guys have done it a lot in five years. Where do you see yourself in the next five? Yeah. Well, uh, this, those are the, uh, emergency housing. Okay. That's one of the goals that we have. And obviously expanding. I want to be more established. I want to get a bigger, a bigger um, shop. So I need to buy something close to the highway or, you know, so the shipping containers can get in and out easily so I can do uh, like the IKEA of uh, shipping containers. Like, you know, <laughs> yes. like uh, let's do, uh, you know, a house with an ABC uh, type containers and you can just build this uh, type of house. And you if, choose them online? Like, okay, I want this. 2A, 2B, okay, let's put yeah. it like an angle here. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, like a puzzle, like an online yeah. puzzle. Yeah, yeah like a Lego. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like a Lego. You're basically yeah. doing human, like adult Legos. Yeah. Yeah, that was he said. Adult Legos. Yeah, that's what I enjoy the most playing with these things. I I just dream about it. I have a few boxes um, at home, we skill have boxes. Some yeah, we should have. Yeah. Well, we have one for you and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Geez. We're gonna bring it. Yeah. So. Uh, All right, that, we're done. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but kidding. this is a very small one. Can't believe you <laughs> forgot it. <laughs> so. Uh, Don't I forget play. your gifts when you come to the podcast, yeah, people. Right. Come on. <laughs> we brought coffee, but I drank it. <laughs> so uh, I play with them, and I just imagine about different shapes and different designs and all that stuff. It's just playing. So what I do is I enjoy it very much, even though it's very stressful when you're on the field and doing it, and you know having a whole bunch of people which working for you is super expensive every hour that passes, the insurance, all the costs involved, and the liabilities and is super, super intense. A lot of responsibility. Yeah, it sounds a like a lot of work. A lot of work, yeah. <laughs> We started building that shipping container project in, in the summer, and just imagine being surrounded by steel and being inside the steel and playing with fire at the same time. Mm. In Florida. In Florida. Woo. So I had People people passing summer. out. Mm. Yeah. That was a little, a little extreme. So when's the project over there gonna be complete? Uh, in well, three months, the, more or less, that's what the general. The contractor. welding part is ready. Yeah, yeah. My, I don't do everything. I just do the welding structure. Um, I do the fun part. That's what. It, that's how <laughs> I see it. And then uh, the general contractors, they see, they, they finish the plumbing, electricity, insulation, drywall. And the rest. Yeah. So that's. I mean, so they're in there and they're framing it up. They're still yeah. putting the, the framing in there, the electricity. I mean, that was kind of unique because when we were in the containers, they had that opened up. They hadn't yet put any of the insulation in or anything like that. Right, so you I were able to see the, the bones of it. Yeah, the bones. That's really, really cool. I believe the insulation was ready, but it, it was not inside the container. What is from the outside. They did the bottom. Uh-huh. The bottom uh, insulation. Yeah, that's why you didn't see it. They, they have to do the, the walls and roof right now. It's <laughs> cool. Whitney, what are the questions you got? So I saw on these notes that Colin provided me, you know, because because I'm not a pro, <laughs> but you have a family history of innovation, which I thought was really cool. So tell us a little bit about that. Your great uh, great he, grandfather, right? He is not into talking about that. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, but yeah, I um, did that biography that to why he was yeah, like. Yeah, she brings it up all the time. <laughs> gotcha. um, I'm proud of it. I think yeah, it's awesome. Well, I am, I am. I just don't show it that much. Uh, John Deere, the tractor uh, people. Um, well, John Deere itself, he was in my generation. Um, he's my great, great grandfather. It's awesome. And um, he he was um, a, um, a smith. Is, how, is that how you say it? Um, a steel smith? Yeah, yeah blacksmith. The blacksmith, exactly. So he, he invented several things. Uh, the, the first a perfect plot to do um, um, for agriculture for agriculture purposes yeah and then yeah um, so my mom is like hey just check it out you know he used to do a steel and you're doing you're playing with steel as well what a coincidence and blah blah, <laughs> blah but yeah that's deep yeah that's cool man that's it that's in the blood it yes. runs in the blood <clears throat> Yeah. She wants to talk about it and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is a perfect marriage. 
It reminds me of every marriage across America. <laughs> Sounds just like my marriage. Yeah, let, let me be honest, when I wrote that, I didn't want to show him. Oh, because oops. he was going to correct everything. And yeah. he was going to say, no, don't put that. No, I don't, <laughs> don't want to talk about that. No. So I was like, it's ready, I already sent it. <laughs> yeah, well, for those of you that are listening, we like basically just try to get a bio so we have a little general background and, and that's what Whitney is referring to. At least we got some bullet points on here. It says great grand great great grandfather was John Deere. Yes. So that's really, really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> and you're and you're doing something important like him, so that's why I, I brought it up because I believe that both of you are doing something important. Thank you. <laughs> Why, why don't you like to talk about it? Is so you feel like the shadow of something oh, so, no, no, so no. grand or something? Or no, what? it's not like that. I just don't want to be sh show off and just saying that you know John Deere, you know, uh, he was my my great great grandfather. But yeah, you already yeah, say hey. it. <laughs> yeah, because of you, you brought it up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, well, uh, the other thing is that um, uh, my father, who has um the John Deere blood, um, I met him when I was about uh, five, 15 years old, so I wasn't uh, really involved with that side of my family. Uh, I grew up in Venezuela, and I, I have more Venezuelan culture than than United States culture. Makes sense. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I grew up more with my other, grand, you know, with the other roots, uh, but... Um, Actually, your, your grandfather from Venezuela was dedicated to agriculture. Too. Yeah, he was into agriculture. So at agriculture the end, too. <laughs> everything is connected. <laughs> Long line of innovators. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you might have said it, and if you did, I apologize, I missed it. But like, what originally, like, like what brought your family to Gainesville? Um, you said you moved here like when you were how old? Um, I moved the first time um, in two thousand. No, I'm sorry. 19, say your age. They, they're going to calculate your age. Don't yeah. say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I moved back to Gainesville in, in 2014. Um, uh, I first uh, wanted to move to Miami, but Miami was a little too too crowded, uh, even though there were, there were a little boats. Um, You're skipping something. You came to high school here. Oh, well, yeah. A long time ago, in 1997, I, I came to GHS. Uh, I learned English in 1997, especially there. Um, and that was just because your family was moving here? I had a cousin who was uh, studying in, in UF. Okay. So I, I moved to Gainesville because she was here and, you know, I had a relative living here and, um, yeah, I moved to Gainesville because that was the only gotcha, reason. I gotcha. Uh, at that time, I thought that Gainesville was a little boring and then I moved to Miami. And then in 2014, when I came back to the U.S., I, I thought that Gainesville was the perfect place, not only uh, to live but to raise kids. is friendlier. is is I think is a is a we're super lucky to be here. Gainesville is amazing. So that's awesome. That I, the I came back to change like that over those years. Like yeah. that's that's what I love, and I feel like I'm continuously seeing and hearing that. You know myself because I constantly like I tell everybody like my first 18 years I bounced around all over the place you know my dad was in the Air Force I, I went I went to three high schools in four years I mean just you know I, I don't regret that life. like I love that life like it, it made me who I am today mm -hmm. I mean I'm able to like build relationships really quick make new friends because of the fact that I had to <laughs> you want to make friends when you're an Air Force kid you gotta be willing to be like hey what's up how you doing yes so you know that definitely helped shape who I am today but man like my second 18 years you know, I'm 36 almost 37 years old it's been right here in Gainesville and I'm just like man this is this is home I love yes. it and I like I see I, I see a lot of the same things I see this growth and, and this opportunity um, for this incredible city, right? I mean, and yeah, it's a great place. And, and for us, place. it's super cool. We live very close to downtown, so we used to go on our bicycles with the girls to downtown on Fridays to to hear the concert. Yeah, you know, it's super friendly for family with kids. Our neighbors are super friendly. Yes. Yes, it's amazing. We we and the kids love the kids it. are going to become so cultured here, which is what I love about yeah. it. Yes. You know, I mean, even like I see, you know, online and all the stuff that's happening with a lot of these major art pieces, and like that that recent one of like the the chrome alligator on the wall. It's, yeah. it's like painted and it's like looks chrome, but it's literally paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, the fact that 
somebody can do that. I'm like, here in Gainesville. That's awesome. I'm like, please paint that on the side of my shipping container in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> like, these are the things that I see happening in my life. Oh, you're putting the pieces together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already like thinking about how I want this thing to look. Um, it's definitely a reality. I'm going to add it to the goals book right here. There you go. So. The only, uh, like I said the other day, the only thing that we miss a lot are the mountains that we used to have <laughs> in Venezuela. So, but it's fine. We we can travel to Colorado or something like that. Now we're gonna get to work on that right away. <laughs> Somebody import some mountains. Yeah, <laughs> we can do it. Uh, we can make John, them out of shipping containers. It. Yes. <laughs> Put a shipping container at the top of a mountain. Yeah. There you go. Or My make, new mountain house. Make mountains out of shipping containers. Yeah. Let's just stack them up. There you go. This is gonna be good. So uh, if there was one thing that you just want everybody to know about the shipping container recycling world, what, like, what would it be? That uh, is super cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, it's super cool. It is definitely cool. And, I, and the place that you guys are working isn't really open to the public or anything, right? I mean, we're just gonna, we're just gonna say, go look at the studio, or go look at our video. I believe not yet. Yeah, not yet, in uh, next year. It will be though, yeah. like they're gonna let people go in there and check it out? Yep. That's gonna be really cool. Okay. Just um, for you to know, if, and if you don't know about shipping containers or for your audience, just Google it. Shipping containers, buildings, or bathrooms, everything that you can imagine, a swimming pool, you, you will see amazing ideas and very creative things and you will fall in love with this. Yeah, we had a client who wanted a pool out of a shipping container. Oh, that sounds neat. Yeah. No, but not, but not under the ground. Yeah, above like the ground. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And he wanted a glass on the side so he could see the people swimming. Yeah. And like a fish tank. You have to like <laughs> really insulate that somehow, right? Because like it would rust. Yeah. So you just put um, water in there. You have to like. No, you have to. It's, a, it's complicated, but there's a company that actually do it, and they they um, they spray the shipping container with an elastomeric inside, and they mm. obviously uh, modify it on the inside, so it is meant to be a pool. So, so now I'm picturing my studio. <laughs> you with see? the swimming pool, the sw <laughs> yeah, like my backyard's gonna be awesome. Everybody needs to be friends with me, and I'll invite you over when I get. It's this gonna be like, like Disney. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna come back home. Shannon's gonna be like, no, 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 we can't do that. <laughs> Give her a photo studio. Yeah. There you go. Oh, there you go. There you she go. would love that actually. Another shipping container. So we're up to three, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> gonna be cool. We have a lot of work. <laughs> well, so if somebody is interested in doing work with you guys, or I mean, you guys have social media channels yes. or website, like you wanna let everybody know where they can find you? Yeah, um, well, we're, we have a web page is weldingtorecycle.com, and you can find us the same way in Instagram and Facebook, Welding to Recycle. Excellent. And, um, Real quick, we're, so we're about to finish up here, but before we do, Whitney, you wanna tell everybody when this event is again? March 16th is our tour of kitchens, so, and we'll be looking for you guys next year, you know, to have a shipping container nice. kitchen on That'd there. Be, so oh, there for go. sure. There That'd you go. Awesome. That would be awesome. It's a tour of kitchens. Yep. Awesome, well guys, everybody, thank you so much for being here. Whitney, thank you for being for an excellent me. host. Thank do you have any last minute questions before we wrap this no, up? No, you, you, my last one was where to find them, so yeah, I can go yeah, okay. look for shipping container, I yeah. guess. Awesome, and John, Vanessa, thank you so much for being here, this is excellent. I'm super excited to see the studio when it's done, so please keep me posted. Sure, um, And And please keep me posted on like the huge vision of being able to help you know, some of the islands out with, with this you know, portable, you know, temporary or permanent housing. Like, I mean, really yeah. permanent. I mean, yeah. it's it's a cool vision, and I'm excited to see that coming. Now you're getting hot, right? Oh uh, yeah. See, before the sh before the show, they were like, "Man, it's cold in here." I'm like, "Yep, I do that on purpose because by the end of this thing, you're gonna be hot." So, <laughs> well, guys, thanks again so much for being here in Gainesville. Yeah, go check them out and definitely support the Junior League of Gainesville. We uh, we appreciate you guys. Thanks, thanks, Aaron, for coming in and checking us out. Thank you. And uh, team, thank you. And Gainesville world, everybody, thank you so much. This is the WHOA GNV podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. Whoa, okay, whoa there you go. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.